Uh, we're here with Dr. Steinert in Boston at the National ASCRS meeting. And Roger, you've been pioneering the use of lasers for corneal transplants using the femtosecond laser to help patients, particularly with keratoconus, get better outcomes for their transplants. Would you like to talk a little bit, bit about giving us an update? Well, thank you very much, Jim. The ability to create the incision, the, the cut for the corneal transplant, has really been vastly improved by the use of lasers rather than steel blades. The lasers can make a uh, much more complex incision, so it's allowed us to do basically a lock and key type of incision so that the tissue uh, intersects and interlocks. And that means that we, on the average, have a more stable incision, it heals faster, and with less astigmatism. Now, in the particular case of keratoconus, we've been able to combine that laser incision with uh, the other big breakthrough, which is called a deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. And what that really in involves is trying to split off the backside layer of a keratoconus patient. That layer is the endothelium and decimase membrane, technically. That's the area that's most vulnerable in a transplant to attack by the body's immune system in a rejection. So if we can keep the patient's inner layer and then put the rest of the transplant over, we're removing the problem with keratoconus, which is the stretched, deformed collagen portion of the cornea, keeping the inner layer that belongs to the patient, and we get the best of both worlds, and we have the laser incision at the same time. Will that change their incidence of rejection at all, do you think, or not? Yes, it definitely will. Now, it doesn't eliminate it because you can have rejection of any of the layers of the transplant, but the other layers we can almost always reverse with steroid drops topically and, and still have a good outcome. The inner layer, when it's under a severe attack by the body's immune system, is irreversibly damaged, and it means you need a second transplant, So, and then with, with uh, not as good success rate. So if we can preserve that inner layer, we absolutely are going to have a much higher success rate and long-term survival of the transplants. And what's the current incidence estimated for the need for transplants in keratoconus patients? Well, fortunately, it's still a minority with the use of rigid contact lenses uh, and some of the uh, other things that we can do to manipulate the uh, optics of the cornea. I, the number most commonly used is somewhere around only 5% of people with keratoconus ending up needing a transplant. Now, we're hopeful that another technology called collagen cross-linking will, in fact, get approved and be available uh, generally for strengthening the cornea in keratoconus patients. That'll drop the need for transplants even more. But right now, that technology is still somewhat controversial, somewhat unproven, uh, and not uh, generally available in the United States. So after years and years of not a lot of progress for keratoconus, we've got a lot of exciting things happening for these patients right now then. Uh, I th you know, it is exciting to see, a, as you said, a, a field that almost has been dormant with very little progress for many decades suddenly have multiple things going on, the laser incisions, the deep anterior lamellar approach to the surgery, the collagen cross-linking. Uh, all of those things are really changing, I think, the ability to uh, make sure that keratoconus patients still are fully functional optically and, and living full and productive lives. Yeah, we've had very good luck with these new hybrid contact lenses and fitting these patients that have been difficult in the past with a soft yes. lens and a hard lens in the center of it. Yeah, that's a great uh, advance. Uh, the larger rigid lenses have been an advance, and uh, there's also the ability in, in some cases to put in little segments uh, in, of plastic inside the cornea. And they don't necessarily eliminate the cone, but if they can change the shape of it and the location of it a little bit and shift it, that improves contact lens tolerance as well as improves the, the optics. So uh, those are all very positive advances. Well, very good. Discovery Fund for iResearch, thanks you very much for the interview.